Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. It's time for our next quarterly wrap up. I no longer do monthly wrap ups, we do quarterly wrap ups where we talk about all my reading stats for the months of, this time it's July, August, September. Oh my God, there's a cat. There's a cat, there's a cat rubbing itself up on the tripod. <laughs> if you see, it starts shaking. That's, oh, she's climbing it. Okay, you're just gonna come, you're gonna come here. Yeah, okay, do you just come in here, everyone? You just wanna show off, don't you? You just wanna show off how cute and gorgeous you are. No. I gotta play. I gotta play. <laughs> oh, she just licked my mouth. Okay. Ew. What was I saying? Yeah, we're doing our courtly reading. Don't climb the tripod again. She's, guys, this cat is the naughtiest cat you've ever met in your life. I love it. I'm so obsessed with that. We're doing a quarterly reading wrap up where we wrap up my reading and we go through also the five worst and five best books I've read during those months. However, you may be thinking, Megan, what are you wearing? What is that one thing you're wearing? And it is the sponsor for today's video, the Udi. Oh my God, guys, guys, hang on. Let's just pan the camera quickly. To say I'm obsessed is an understatement. This is the Udi, which is basically like a wearable blanket hoodie. And I've always wanted one and I am obsessed. I cannot stop wearing it. I'm wearing it all day, every day. I'm wearing it while I'm working at my desk. I'm wearing it in the evenings when I'm reading. Guys, it's perfect for curling up with a book and getting cozy and reading. I love it so much. I can't describe to you how obsessed I am with this. Like, I, I know I'm a bit late to the party with Udi. I've always wanted one, but I, guys, if you want something cozy to read in, this is it. I, I love it. It is truly the perfect reading companion. It has a pocket here in the front. It has cuffs so you can roll the sleeves up if you're like cooking or washing something. I adore it. I adore it. I, I cannot stop wearing it. And you know, as the months are getting colder and colder, this is just the perfect companion. It's so warm. It's so <laughs> warm and cozy and soft and fluffy. It's like a blanket on the inside as well. Guys, I love it. So I have a code for you, which is MegWithBooks15. And if you use that code, you'll get 15% off an Udi. So if you've been thinking, there's a Yampa falling on me. <laughs> Yampa wants in on the Udi action. Um, if you've been thinking about ordering one, now's the time. Use my link down below. Use my code MegWithBooks15 to get 15% off an Udi. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Anyways, let's go talk about the reading statistics for the months of July, August, and September. Okay, let's talk reading stats, shall we? I think this is the most fun I've ever had filming a video. I'm just so cozy and warm. Anyways, let's talk about it. Let's talk reading stats. So in this quarter, I read 31 books in total. Let's see how many I read per month. And I'll put up a little graphic of all the books I read that month. Because I'm not going to talk about all of them, but you can see all of them. I only read five books in July. It was an awful month. Terrible, absolutely horrific life-wise. <laughs> reading went by the wayside. So I only read five books. I then read 16 books in August. So I pulled it back a bit. And then I read 10 in September. Although I have to hide the two from you that I can't tell you about yet that I read in September. I read a total of 8,912 pages, which averages out to 97 pages per day and an average per book of 287, which is fairly average. I feel like it's always just a little bit under 300 because like the average book is basically 300 pages, but then I'm reading a few novellas. Always in there. <laughs> always got to throw a few novellas in there. I'm like, where's my next novella? <laughs> the average rating I gave books was a 3.6. Mm. Average rating I gave books were 3.6. This is what trauma looks like. I think maybe we're just gonna have to give up on this year being my best average rating. It may in fact be my worst. Much to think about, much to think about. It hasn't worked out for me this year, life-wise, reading-wise. But uh, yeah, average rating was a 3.6. And the average amount of months a book had spent on my TBR was 8.16. I had a lot of books that were from Wrapped Up Retro that had been on my TBR for like 40, 50 months. And then I had a lot of books that I was reading that I'd just got or were getting for videos that had been on my TBR for zero months. So it averages out to 8.16. Let's look at some charts. So first we've got genre. And always with these genre charts now, it's it's like so much more clustered because I read some books where it's like one book <laughs> um, in that genre. So I read, let's all take this in everyone, three classics, three classics, three classics, three classics. Who is she? 
I'm out here like, <laughs> oh my God, me and the classic girlies are gonna queen out together. I love it. I read one contemporary, I read five fantasy, two historical, two horror, one magical realism, one memoir, five mystery, two nonfiction, what else? Three romance, four sci-fi. Wow, who is she? Uh, one thriller and one true crime. I'll also quickly show you the subgenres here because I read a lot of like historical leaning books that you wouldn't necessarily, because you think, oh, I only read two historical books, but six more books had historical as the subgenre. We also had quite a lot of mysteries. So maybe they're like sci-fi mysteries or fantasy mysteries where the other genre was the prevailing genre and some more fantasy and then everything else is a mix. We don't need to go through each of those. <laughs> In terms of formats this month, I read one and, th whoa. I'm like getting burnt. Can we not? Let's go away. It was supposed to be a cloudy day. <laughs> I read one anthology, which isn't, you know, they're not always my favorite, but I feel like one and a quarter is a nice, you know, have throw one in. One graphic novel, 24 novels, four novellas. We read four novellas, like I said, we always got to throw them in, and one short story, and it's a very short story, it was like seven pages. So that really brought the, probably brought the average down. In terms of how I read the books, I read one just via audiobook, two via ebook, nine just physically, and 19 with the mixture, which is the audiobook and the physical. Sometimes you just need it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes you just need it. Actually, the video I'm filming at the moment is a, it's one I've been talking about for ages. We don't need to tease it anymore, but it's one that I know I'm not really gonna like the books, but I am struggling to find audiobooks for a lot of them. A lot of them are older books that like aren't really in reading circulation anymore for good reason. <laughs> and I'm struggling to find audiobooks for them. So I'm really struggling to get the video done because like, I need just, I need to consume these books passively and I can't, I'm having to actively <laughs> consume these books and it's a struggle. In terms of author status, this is how I like to see it. I read six debuts, 10 that were new to me and 15 that I'd read from before. I really like to prioritize reading pretty much half authors that I've read from before and half that are new, rather uh, either they're new to me or they're a debut. And I feel like I haven't seen that split so far this year. So I'm really happy to see that. I love seeing basically half half authors that I'd read from before. In terms of how I acquired the books, oh my god, this chart looks so funny. <laughs> 17 were books I bought for myself, one was from Everand, 12 were gifted, and one was from Book of the Month. That's like a very strange looking <laughs> pie chart. In terms of audience, dear god, 27 adult, and two YA, and two middle grade. She just doesn't read YA and middle grade anymore. <laughs> I'm an adult girl now. In terms of series status, three books were first in a series, although I don't know how many of those I'm actually continuing. I think I'm only continuing one of those, one of those series. Uh, six were part way through a series, which we love to see, making good progress in series, and 22 were standalones. Here's a little look at the publication year. We don't need to read all these out, but good amount of 2024. I had nine 2024 releases this quarter, which is pretty good. Um, a few 2023s, a few 2020 few 2019s, 2016s, and then the rest were basically just a mix. I read a book from 1955, a book from 1956, a book from 1989. And then quickly, I'll just show you this map with what countries books were set in. I read one book set in China, nine set in the USA, six set in the United Kingdom, one set in Vietnam, one set in Italy, one set in France, one set in Poland, and one set in Spain. Okay, I think that's all of our reading stats. And let's go talk about my worst books of the quarter and my best books of the quarter. Dina's just sitting here like in between a stack of books and the ring light, just like, <laughs> she's very interested. I don't know if she's ever seen me film like this before. Anyways, the thing with my five worst is, my worst book of the quarter, I cannot tell you about yet because I've managed to keep it pretty shtum, this video that I'm doing. I haven't mentioned any any books on the channel that I'm gonna be reading for this video. And uh, one of the, one of the you know, the worst book I read this quarter is in that video, which you will hopefully see this weekend if I can get, you know, myself together <laughs> and finally finish reading the books for this video. And also probably like the fourth worst book I read this month is also in that video, or this quarter, sorry. I always say this month. If, I still haven't got out of the habit yet. Just don't listen to me when I say that. Still talk stupid. So keep that in mind. I'm going to mention five, but the bottom two probably wouldn't be on this list otherwise. And like the bottom three are all three stars because I just had a very middling month. I just read a lot of three stars. I just had three star after three star after three star. So they're not terrible. And even the second book is a case of me not liking it, but recognizing how it could be for others. The, the worst book that I'm gonna mention, not actually my worst book, my second worst actual worst book of the quarter, but the worst book I'm gonna mention, I 
don't see how people can enjoy that. I don't. But let's get into the book, shall we? We're probably not going to spend too long on these because I actually don't hate the, all of them, you know? So coming in at number five is one I feel bad about because like I said, I don't think this book is bad. It's Pages and Co, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. This is the second in a middle grade fantasy series that I read this month and decided not to continue the series. I gave this three stars. Again, I don't think this one is bad. It had been basically four years since I read the first book, so that's on me. <laughs> that's on me. I'm struggling a little bit with some middle grade and, and YA nowadays. I struggle to like place them. There's certain middle grade I love and like I think is wonderful but this one I just felt like it was sometimes tr dumbing itself down and for children rather than like yeah I feel like you can push children farther than some kids authors realize and there was a moment where I felt like this was dumbed down but for me really the reason this was three stars was it felt like it was finishing up a lot of threads from the first book rather than answering the threads it created in this book and as someone who read the first book four years ago and I just don't necessarily like when books bleed over to that extent I like when there's hints of things in books and little storylines but really the main storyline was kind of continuing on from the first book, but also creating its own storyline in this, but then that was all unanswered. And that just did not work for me, sadly. Dida's a menace. If you can hear her, she's just being very naughty over there. <laughs> A permanent state is what it is. I really enjoyed the first book in the series when I read it, but something about this one just felt a little bit incomplete for me. Then coming in at number four is a me problem again. Basically, I'm just gonna blame myself for all of these. It is Arch Conspirator by Veronica Roth. This is an, in is it Antigone? Antagony? I always say things wrong, guys. We know pronunciation is not my strong point. By that, I mean, I'm not gonna conversate with you. I'm not going to invest time I think it's in you. Huh? Just say talk. I'm not gonna talk to you. It's a retelling of that. And I just think as someone who had no real knowledge of, hi, I just get so distracted by her. Oh, you're gonna sleep against that book now. I love you. Oh, life's so hard when you're a pussycat. Um, yeah, as so sorry, I'm getting distracted. Oh, she's killing the ring light. Uh, <laughs> This has been our life for the past month, guys. She's just so naughty. <laughs> As someone who has no knowledge of that myth, that story, I don't think this really worked for me. I think this was written for people who knew, who were in the know, and your girl was not in the know. So I just did not really enjoy it. I, I also feel like this is a, a sci-fi retelling and it's set in this world where there's like forced, um, women, women are is to like have kids basically but when you have kids you like take the soul of someone who's died and like can reincarnate them or like rebirth them and there was just and, the, and it's like a climate catastrophe this is a very short book right it's like 100 pages it was trying to do too much in too short a space of time I think if you enjoy Antigone retellings and you know the story well this could be fun but I feel like it was more referential to people who already know the story than someone like me who has no idea and was like well why do I care about any of this it relied on you caring about these characters from the original story and myth and and being invested in them that way than making you care about them in this book I did not care about anyone in this book <laughs> number three is another three another three star this one was tricky maybe this is more of a 2.5 but I'm never unhauling this book because I love this edition that I got it's murder road by Simone St. James I mean I just I got I love, oh, I love this edition so much. So this is a horror set in the 80s where we've got these two characters who are on their honeymoon and they're driving one night and they see a woman, <laughs> she's so distracting. They see her on both sides of the road bleeding. They put her in their car to help her and she dies like in their car. No, you're gonna get kicked out. You're making so much noise. We're just gonna hold her like this for a bit because she likes to be held like this. She likes to dangle. So we're just gonna hold it like this while we talk. Oh, this is interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, and they decide to investigate what happened. Here's the thing. I have loved Simone St. James in the past. I really enjoyed the book of cold cases. I really, in I loved Broken Girls. This did not feel like Simone St. James. I've always felt like Simone St. James's book had a certain, had a, had a certain sophistication to them, had a certain intelligence to them in both the writing style and the plot. And I just really feel like this didn't, it felt so dumb. It felt like a first draft. The characters felt unfinished. The plot felt unfinished. Don't bite my arm. She's a killer. She loves biting arms and biting f <laughs> Why are you so naughty? Why are you so naughty? I'm ready to cause absolute havoc. Oh, yeah, get the mic. Hmm. 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 Okay. Um, and yeah, I just... <laughs> 
She also likes my OD. She likes that it's soft. Hi. Yeah, I know. You want to go have fun, but being fun and tells you being naughty. Right, come on, dudes. You're going out. Dude, yeah, what's this? Right, I've kicked her out. I gave her a toy <laughs> so we can talk. This, yeah, it just felt so unintelligent compared to, I feel like I was reading from a completely different author. It felt like a first draft. The ideas of this, the plot beats of this, the characters on this, I felt like could have been done in such an interesting way. Like the glimmers of possibility are there, but it just was not executed well. And I was like, this is just completely different to the other Simone St. James I've read. Also in her other books, I've always felt like Simone St. James has like a touch of paranormal, like a, it's always like a bit of a shoulder, like, oh yeah, like it's not, it's done in a very like seen through the corner of the eye way, whereas this was more in your face. And I'm just not sure if I enjoyed that. Number two is one that I recognize the problem is me. I read this while Rora was dying <laughs> and just after she died and it was the, le the last thing I should have been reading at that time because it's a very intelligent book and requires a lot of brain power. And I have zero reading comprehension of this book. So you know what? I've never read this book, so I wouldn't know. Sorry to this book. <laughs> so sorry, I don't know you. I don't know her. So I'm honestly not sure what I'm gonna say to you. And that is the three body problem. I... <sighs> I've kind of wiped the time that when I read this from my brain, because it's just too painful. Um, but this is, oh, what, okay. So it's set in China during the Cultural Revolution at the start of it. And then there's like 40 years later, there's all this science happening and there's a game that you can go in and play and there's the three body problem that's to do with like suns and shit. When I told you I have zero reading comprehension, I have zero reading comprehension. This, I, I, this was the worst time I could have read this book. It requires so much intelligence and brain power and I did not have that to give. I should have been reading cute romances or like a, late, a bit Lady Hardcastle and I was trying to read this shit and honestly, <laughs> zero comprehension. But I do feel like this book was really setting up the world, the world building for the next in the series. I'm not gonna continue the series, absolutely not. But the stuff to do with the game, it felt like we'd only just, we, you know, this book is really just to set up everything else. It didn't really feel like a book in its own right to me. It felt very, very ugh, inconsequential, or not, not enough of a storyline. I, I actually did not understand what's going on. I didn't understand the point of the game. Well, I did, but I didn't care. <laughs> Didn't give a thing care. So yeah, I, I don't really have much to say to you. This was just not for me. Not for me. Not for me. And when I got there, I just felt, nah, this is not for me. No. And then this last book, I, I did not enjoy it at all. Another two star. It is The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. In this we're following a young boy who lives on a remote Scottish island who was basically, it's basically very much his inner monologue, this book. It's very much told from his perspective and his kind of inner chaotic monologue. It's about um, him kind of talking about how he's killed people in the past and also about his brother who's escaped from, is it prison or a mental institution? I'm not sure. And um, it's just a lot of him killing animals or torturing animals. And I don't want to read that. I don't, I do not want to, fun enough, don't want to read that. <laughs> no, I, I, some people would say this is like a gothic horror and it's creepy and whatever. I just found it deeply unpleasant. I was just like, I just don't, listen, I like reading, you know, I don't read a lot of happy stuff over here. It's mostly mystery, you know, fantasy is not happy or thriller or horror. Like I don't read like a lot of romance or contemporary. I can read some there, but it's like one, you know, some little shelves versus like, all this death. <laughs> but this is just, I don't, I'm not interested in reading the descriptions of these, of animals being hurt over and over again, or people being killed in this kind of warped perspective. And also the twist at the end of this would not be written today. I don't think the author was writing it from a problematic point of view, but it would never be published today. It would never be written today. Like that, it would just never be something that you'd like, in the way that it was framed, I don't think it would be done in this way, this ending. So I wouldn't recommend it. Oh God, it was horrible. <laughs> I just found it deeply, deeply like viscerally unpleasant to read. But let's talk the best books that we read this month or this quarter, <laughs> shall we? We have two nonfiction on this list. The first is Not That Bad by Roxane Gay. This is 4.5 and the next book is 4.5 stars. I only had three five stars this quarter, which is, Kind of crazy. I was struggling, you know, I was struggling. 
Oh, Dida wants to be let in. She's meowing at the door. Okay, come on. It, guys, it's like having a baby. She needs to be constantly amused, constantly entertained. <laughs> you had enough fun with your toy. Me? Mm -hmm. Should I put you on the bed? You gotta behave, okay? Because she's also so vocal. She's such a yapper, guys. <laughs> Okay, she's gonna play with the ring light, but we're just gonna ignore it. This is Not That Bad Dispatches from Rape Culture, and it's an anthology about different people talking about their... <laughs> Sorry. Dina! <laughs> it's really good. Talking about their experiences with kind of... Uh, there's, diff there's different elements of this. Kind of harassment they face, or workplace um, attitudes towards women. It's predominantly women in this, but there are... Jesus Christ, Dina. I will just say that um, I... I sabotage a lot of things. Oh. In it, yeah. Okay. Jesus, okay. you gotta go. You gotta go. You can come back in here when I'm done. Say bye to all the lovely people. Bye bye. I'm so naughty. Mm. Can you give them a meow? <laughs> Do a meow. Go, mm. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Right, apologies for everyone. I've taken her to my mum. <laughs> Right, um, yes, it's it's mostly women, but there are some non-binary people, or there's a couple men writing in this, but kind of the attitudes towards women and, or femme people in the world and how they're belittled or kind of some, some people's experience with sexual assault or rape, a lot of them are, but some of them are more just the attitudes or the kind of catcalling, harassment, bullying, discrimination. I thought it was incredibly, incredibly well done, which is why I gave it 4.5. You know, the only reason it's not a five is I do find it difficult in an anthology. There's gonna be ones you prefer to others. And there were some in this that didn't resonate with me. And there were some in this that were some of the best essays I've ever read. But there were some that I found saying boring when these are such like a personal thing. It sounds sounds wrong for me to say, and probably is wrong for me to say, but just didn't resonate with me personally. Also, I did feel like um, you know, it is a bit old, and some of what people were saying in this was probably revolutionary at the time, but has become more of the public consciousness and attitude now and the progress we've made since like 2018, I think this was published, which is, yeah, six years. So I think the change that society has gone on made some of what was being said in this less, you know, revolutionary, but I still think it's an incredibly powerful read. Coming at number four, I can't find it. I don't know what I've done with it. I literally just read it, but it's an act of foul play by T.E. Kinsey, the next in the Lady Hardcastle series, which I love. I gave this one 4.5. It's basically a murder mystery that they're solving. If you don't know this series, I mean, where have you been? She doesn't even go here. But uh, it's set in Edwardian England. We have Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo, and they solve murder mysteries together. And this one was a murder at a theatre, which I loved. It was all about them investigating this cast of actors. And I loved, loved, loved the dynamic of the actors, because obviously they can lie quite well. I thought that was super interesting. Flo's twin sister appears for the first time in this book, which is so much fun. And this series is my heart. I know I, I, don't, I feel like I talk about it all the time, so it's not very interesting for you guys, but I, I just love this series. I love it so much. I love it so dearly. I'm so obsessed with it. It's everything to me. <laughs> I love these characters. It is just such a heartwarming, um, heartwarming series. And one of my patrons actually just messaged me saying the most recent one is one of their favorites. So I only have two more to read that are out at the moment, and then I'm caught up, which is kind of a scary thought. I never thought I'd be caught up with the Lady Hardcastle series, but um, I love it. I love this series so much. Next we have our first five star of the quarter and it is The Brides of High Hill by Nevo. This is the fourth I think in the singing, no fifth, fifth in the Singing Hills cycle by Nevo where we follow the cleric Chi as they grow around and gather stories. It's basically their role as a cleric is to gather stories and in this one cleric Chi is helping a young bride who is scared of being married to this lord that she's been you know is being wed to and we, we travel to the kind of you know compound that all of this family and the staff live on and it's very gothic, it's very haunting. There's whispers of what happened to his previous wives and I loved this one. I thought the atmosphere in this one was wonderful. I also started reading them physically again, which for me, I much prefer. I, I listened to the audio for the previous two and I didn't love them as much. And someone was like, Megan, I think you prefer the physical reading experience of this. And I was like, you're 
right. <laughs> You're right, I've made an error. I've just made a massive mistake and now I'm really annoyed. Because like there's something about these ways it's written that reading them in your head and slowly and pondering over certain sentences is how you should read it. Audiobook is constantly going, right? And it's like a bit of an effort to, you don't really ever rewind an audiobook, do you? But there's certain sentences that Nevo writes that you just want to linger on and reread. And I loved it. I love the atmosphere. I don't want to tell you too much about it because obviously it's very, very short and I don't want to spoil where this story goes because I think the twists in it are wonderful. But this was just a great addition to the series for me. Probably my favourite so far in the series. I, the atmosphere is wonderful. The characters, the, the relationships that Cleric Chi builds in this one. Oh, it was amazing. Then we have our other non-fiction coming at number two and it is The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. This is basically about the Radium Girls who painted clock faces using radium and they were told to lick lick the brushes. So they were constantly licking the brushes with radium on them and everyone thought radium was this miracle healing <laughs> property but it ended up killing or you know severely disfiguring a lot of these women and this was just fascinating. I love women history. We know I, I we know I do. I'm not interested in men. History is just too many men <laughs> and I just love women history and the way that this brought those women to life from history and brought them back and made them feel so real and used their voices was absolutely wonderful. I thought it was absolutely fascinating. It does take you a moment to get into it because you, you just get bombarded with a lot of, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. There's even like a list of people at the start but I don't even feel like that helped. Like there's so many people involved in this story that you're just kind of like <laughs> over the face with and it did take me a moment to get to know everyone but once you do the hearing these stories is so magical and um I, I know that another non-fiction i would really really recommend it makes you angry it makes you feel so deeply i i, I just loved following these women and their stories and their fight for justice I loved it. And then my favourite book of the quarter is Queen Bee by Juno Dawson, which is kind of like a companion novella to the Her Majesty's Royal Coven series. And this one is about Anne Boleyn's coven and, oh, listen. <laughs> and, uh, and what happens after she is beheaded. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Like I mentioned in the vlog, there's been so many comments about Anne Boleyn on this vlog <laughs> about whether you guys, like, who are international knew who she was. I think if you know who anyone is, it's probably like the Tudors, right? And Queen Victoria. Like you probably don't know who the Stuarts are. You don't know who James the First is or you remember do you know King Charles the First? We were kicked off the throne. And then it's like and we had like a period without a monarchy and then King uh, Charles the Second, his son, came back. And you know, he's part Scottish, French, Italian, a little bit Dane, but one hundred per hundred percent I can't speak, one hundred percent party animal. Champagne. Spaniels I adore. No, okay, enough, 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 enough. It's the King Charles II song from Hope History. It's sung by the king, that is Matthew Bainton, who I love and hope has not seen my video talking about how I didn't like the good girl's guy to man a show that he's in. <laughs> I live in fear that people have seen that. I live in fear. But Matthew Bainton was one of my plus points, so I love you. <laughs> Anyways, I just thought this was so fun. You know, it's a novella, it's pretty short, but the way that this kind of expands the world of Her Majesty's Royal Coven, the series, is absolutely wonderful. The relationships in this are absolutely wonderful. The little nods to history. I just love, I basically love books that are referential to either history, like re-fictionalised history, like fanfic, or like writing about, you know, like Strange Case, The Alchemist's Daughter, like re-fictionalising known fictional characters like Sherlock and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, I love that. I love that. I love my family. I love my work. I love my life. <laughs> That's like my kind of thing. <laughs> so this is a part of that for me. And I was obsessed with Anne Boleyn and just seeing this, this is the world was just, oh, it was so well done. The magic was so fun. The relationships were so fun. I loved it. So there we have it, everyone. That is my quarterly reading wrap up. Let me know how your reading went in these months. It was a little bit of a rough period for me. And I feel like that was reflected in my in my reading. But um, let me know what you thought of any of the books I mentioned, if you agree with me or disagree. Also remember, check out my link down below and use code MegWithBooks15 for 15% Dolphin Udi, I may be getting more. I'm obsessed with it. I need like one on rotate. Like when this one's washing and drying, I need another one. I need another one to wear. I, lo I love it. It's so cozy. I'm so cozy, guys. I love it so, so much. Make sure you check out the link down below. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.